All right, Mr. D, let's talk a little bit about tree holes and bores. We're starting to get a lot of questions at the office about what is this hole in my tree? So let's enlighten the folks. Yeah, well, you know, most of the holes I see in trees are little holes or woodpecker mm. holes. Mm. If you have a, a hole about the size of a pencil, you know, a quarter of an inch in diameter or something like that, and they're in even rows, Yeah. you know, so, yeah. across a, a tree trunk, yeah. that's where a woodpecker, you know, there and he'll, then he'll move over and, you know, <laughs> pop again and just keep moving over. But those kind of holes are not, not to worry about. Now, if you see a hole that has... Uh, sap exuding out of it or frass or sawdust or something like that, that indicates that there is a bore in that plant and uh, you might need to take steps to, to try to stop that. They're very, very hard to control. I mm -hmm. mean, systemic insecticides are probably the best, best way to go. Um, I know uh, on the, according to the, the Red Book, uh, chlorpyrifos is, mm -hmm. is a, a, a material that you can spray on the outside that sometimes has some penetration and, and will move into the tree, but but that's not available for homeowners right. anymore. I know it's only available commercially, and I would assume that the commercial tree companies and you know the, those those folks could get could get a hold I of that. I think so. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, the big holes, like a big knot hole, you know that's yeah. uh, that's a den for a squirrel or a, <laughs> a, a raccoon or some kind of critter, and you know they they happen when a uh, tree limb was broken off or if you pruned a tree, especially if you pruned it too close to the trunk of the tree, you know, we recommend when you take a limb off, uh, even a small limb, leave about a quarter inch of right. that limb so that you don't injure the collar. Uh -huh. uh, and if you injure the collar, then it's very, very apt to, yeah. to, to cause a knot hole. But if you've got one, you know, that's just a den for, for a critter. I wouldn't worry about that. But in uh, the little holes, that don't have anything coming out of them, I wouldn't worry about. But, but uh, the ones that have an insect in there, you might want to take some steps to take care of. Let's go back to the, the woodpecker for a second. So is that going to cause any major damage to the tree? No. Because that's usually a question if folks no. want to know. No. Not really. Uh, I guess sap suckers, there's, some of the woodpeckers are sap suckers and yeah. they're feeding on the, on the sap. And, and, you know, the trees are, are very, very good at uh, putting a, nat a barrier between disease tissue or, mm -hmm. you know, damaged tissue and, and healthy tissue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never, ever heard of a woodpecker killing a tree. You know, they may mark the bark up a little bit, but yeah. I don't think it's going to injure the tree at all. Yeah. I, I actually have woodpecker damage on one of my trees at home. It, it's fine. Mm -hmm. They really yeah. like pecan trees. They um, seem like there's some tree, and it may just be that the bark is easy to see uh, the damage or, um, that they make uh, on some of the trees, but uh, they do seem to prefer some mm -hmm. species over others. Okay. Now, wh what kind of damage, uh, you know, do those bores cause, though, once they're inside of that tree? It depends on what kind of bore it is. Okay. Uh, some some bores are uh, secondary. Mm -hmm. uh, if a tree is struck by lightning or stressed, uh, bores can get into that kind of tree and, 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 some of them can be fatal, and I can give an example. Okay. Uh, southern pine beetle yeah. and pine trees, the Ips and Graver beetle and pine trees. They're generally a secondary infection caused when a tree is stressed. Mm. And it may just be that, that it's an older tree. And, you know, most pines in our area are not native. Most of the pines in our area were planted as okay. an agricultural crop, and they should have been harvested at about 30, 35 years. Wow. Okay. And if they live longer than that, then something's going to have to take them out, or you know, they, they, if, if they start to get stressed, then these beetles will go in and take them out. Another example is the peach tree borer, mm. uh, and there's maple borers, and 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 the peach tree borers will get into peach plums, nectarines, and also the ornamental, uh, right. you know, flowering peaches and, and plums and and and, and dogwood, right? And aren't they well, they're dogwood yeah, borers. Dog they're dogwood right. borers, and and when they get into those. They, they can be fatal. They, they, they get, they bore into the tree and, 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 and they can, you know, go in, you know, up in through the cambium layer and vascular tissue. The Ips and Graver and the pine beetles are really, really small, but they make a lot of galleries, you know, S-shaped mm -hmm. galleries mm -hmm. and a lot of twisting galleries and, and actually girdle the tree, you know, underneath, you know, between the, the bark and the cambium layer. And uh, that's how they kill. But, um, 
another example of a secondary infection would be uh, uh, the longhorn wood borer. Yeah. If you have a tree that's struck by lightning, uh, oak tree or pecan tree or something like that, uh, and, you, and, you, and, and, and some of them are, are uh, uh, they're, make round holes and then there's some D-shaped holes, yeah, you know, D-shaped you know, they're holes. two different kinds yeah. of bores. Uh, and you can actually hear them gnawing on the tree. You know, oh. <laughs> and the sawdust is falling out, and yeah. you hear them gnawing. And those, in those cases, uh, the tree is probably dead before it knows it. Sometimes you will see that happen when the leaves are still green, but it's just, I mean, the tree has already it's, it's had a fatal lightning strike or something like that, and right. it's, you know, they'll go down very quickly. Uh, and, and even some of these longhorn, the big, big, big boars will also get into pine trees and things like okay. that, too. Yeah, speaking of boars, you know, the emerald ash borer, there's been a lot of conversation, you know, about, uh, about them lately, mm-hmm. possibly, right. you know, making their way down to the Memphis area. Right, they're, um, you know, they're an invasive pest. And, yeah, and it seems they've been moved around in a lot of the firewood. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I remember you said before, you know, if you put the firewood in the fireplace and you hear the, what, the snap, snap crackle, crackle and pop. pop. Yeah, it's not all wood, you know. <laughs> it's, it's not all wood. wood. <laughs> Uh, and, and, that, and that's where you'll normally see uh, the longhorn wood borers, the beetles with the you know, long the antenna, long antenna uh-huh. the side. You'll see them around your stack of firewood because they're in there, and uh, they will actually infest firewood after it's cut. But uh, borers are, are some of the toughest insects to control, and they're an example, especially if you have fruit trees. Mm. Uh, most of the time with insect insecticides, we recommend waiting until you have an infestation and and uh, identifying the insect mm-hmm. and then, you know, you know, targeting, you know, go with a rifle approach, you know, try to take it out and right. not injure any, uh, any uh, uh, beneficials. Right. But with the uh, borers, most of them only have one generation a year uh, or they have a few generations a year and we tend to go with preventative sprays for borers because you would rather prevent them from, Oh yeah. you'd rather have an insecticide there when that female's laying an egg, you know. Um, than, than to try to cure the problem. It's a lot harder to cure than it is to prevent. It's definitely going to be harder because, mm-hmm. yeah, again, they're going to disrupt the flow of nutrients and water. But usually you only, you'll only have to go in June, you know, maybe one or two yeah. applications in early, early June, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, Mr. D, we appreciate that.